Hey, Tim DeStazio here, and I am at my parents' house here in Hendersonville, North Carolina. It is a cold, crisp, late December morning, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on their furnace. Now, they had this house built a few years ago. They used a builder. The builder used his own guy. As you're going to see, there's a lot about this installation that they could have done a lot better. I'm only going to be able to address a few things today, but one of the things that we're going to be addressing is their airflow. What they did on this furnace is they panned a joist coming from a 20 by 25 return grill above and after they pan the joist they come down off the joist with a 14 inch flex not a great way of doing it they go into a plenum here which is the same footprint as the furnace that part's not bad but this is a 70,000 BTU furnace so let's think about this two and a half ton AC outside 70,000 BTU furnace we're probably a little bit borderline on airflow but how do we know for sure well the only way that we know for sure is to test it and that's why we're going to be using the true flow grid from the energy conservatory not only are we going to be quantifying the airflow but there's another feature that is fairly new that i want to demonstrate to you and that's called forecasting forecasting is where we get to predict what the static pressures are going to be if we made airflow adjustments or replace the equipment so let's pretend that this is an older 80 percent furnace and i'm here on a sales call i'm going to do a heat load calculation i'm going to do a manual j a manual s system selection i'm going to know what my new airflow needs to be you've got to do that first obviously you need to do that on every sales call now as we know an 80 percent furnace doesn't need as much airflow as a 90 plus or as an all electric heat pump but i know that i'm going to have to bump up my airflow from what it currently might be doing well i need to know whether i'm going to be running into any ductwork problems doing that and if i'm going to have a high static pressure or airflow issues once i bump that up and then i'm going to plug this into the true flow grid app and we're going to use forecasting mode and we're going to figure out if we had to replace this system with something different what that airflow would need to be and also what our static pressure is going to be so i'm going to show you how all that works so let's get started let's open up the true flow app and choose system airflow and static pressure and we're going to choose heating mode this time and my parents have a gas furnace and this is a horizontal furnace we're, ne we're next going to just enter in some information about the system the air filter where it's located and now we're going to enter in the rated btu input of the furnace it's a 70,000 input it's a 95 percent which means that it is a 66,500 output. And again, just putting in the temperature rise information from the nameplate. Here, we're gonna put in the measured temperature of the return air. It's a place here to derate the furnace if you're at an extremely high altitude. My parents' altitude is not that high, so we don't need to do anything there. A few other little reminders here before we start our test. We take a series of static pressure readings. The first one is take just after the filter. For that, I had to drill a hole in the pan joist and then the return duct. Now, I just drill a test port there. Next one is at the outlet of the furnace, and that's just before the evaporator coil. And finally, another one in the supply duct itself. So we're just static pressure mapping here. We have everything that we need to take a final airflow reading by inserting the true flow grid into the filter grill. Looks like we have around 760, 750 CFMs. And now the workflow is complete. We can name it. The next thing that I like is these gauges here that kind of tell us where our airflow is in relation to our total static pressure. Looks like our airflow is low and our total external static pressure is a little on the high side. It even tells us that our return plenum pressure and our filter jar pressure are a little bit borderline as well. This is really valuable information as we evaluate and diagnose where the airflow and ductwork problems are in the system. The forecasting is going to tell us what our static pressure pressure is as airflow changes. Now notice that the max default external static pressure is 0.7. We're already higher than that right now. Let's say that we're on a sales call and we are proposing installing a heat pump to replace this furnace and the load calculation only calls for two tons. Forecasting allows us to predict what that static pressure would be. So let's go ahead and show you that workflow now. We're going to replace the system with a heat pump and we're going to choose an air handler and then we're just going to start playing around with the capacity. Now let's say that my load calculation only called for two tons. In that scenario, we actually solve our airflow problem. We bring our static pressure to just under 0.6 inches in water column and everything's in the green. Now what if we did a filter upgrade? 
can even play around with a filter pressure drop. And as we can see, even if our filter pressure drop was as high as 0.15, which is about as high as I would want it to go, we are still technically in the green, both in airflow and in total static pressure. What if we wanted to try to solve our airflow problem by simply speeding up the blower? What effect would that have? Well, we can change the airflow and we can use the slider to simulate what our static pressure is going to do. We can slide the slider up and back down. And as we can see, as we increase our airflow up until where it's in the green, our total static pressure goes way up, well past the red. In fact, the cage is maxed out. It even forecasts what the rest of our static pressures are going to read. As you can see, the return plenum and the filter pressure drop are the biggest offenders. And those are the duct repairs that we'd have to make if we wanted to make those airflow changes. So if this was a sales call for me, I have two options. I can either install a furnace and fix the ductwork, or I can bring the heat pump down to the ductwork size and only have a few slight modifications to make and right size that heat pump. And finally, we want to plug our test ports back with a proper plug. Remember in HVAC, we don't drill holes, we install test ports. So we wanna make sure that these are plugged up so that we don't have any air leaks, we don't have any places where critters can get in, and we can always remove them next time we need to do some service on this system. So what did we find when we actually tested airflow? Well, my parents' furnace is under aired. And it's under aired, not at the supply, but it's under aired in the return plenum and ductwork. And we found that out because we did some static pressure mapping using the TrueFlow Grid app and the workflow. Now we run into this all the time, just sometimes we don't realize it. You guys that are up north in basements with the vertical furnace and ACs, you see a really skinny return drop all the time. Well, that's essentially what these installers did to my parents, only that they did it horizontally with a pan joist. Now the other thing that we found out by forecasting using the TrueFlow Grid app, is that if we were to scale the system down to a two ton heat pump, which is all the manual J heat load calculations said that zone needs, we actually would be right on the money. Our airflow would be right, our static pressures would be right. We're essentially bringing the system down to the ductwork. Let's say that we were on a service call and we used this app and we found out that our furnace was under aired. You might say, well, I can simply speed up the fan and I can get the airflow back that way. But because of forecast, use fan law too and we realize that if we increase the fan speed to get our airflow back up where it should be our static pressure would be way over an inch of static pressure so that's not the solution the solution is creating some more room in that return and that's not going to be easy to do but I'm really glad I at least have that information so that I can start thinking about solutions and you're going to run into that a lot in the field as well so by using a tool like the True Flow Grid from the Energy Conservatory, not only do we quantify airflow, but we use those workflows to predict what airflow and static pressure will do when we make airflow changes and even equipment proposal changes. So I hope this video really helped you see the value in measuring airflow. Airflow has always historically been one of the most important measurements a service technician can make, but also one of the hardest to make accurately. Not anymore. Please invest in the True Flow Grid grid. This is an excellent tool for diagnosing airflow problems and protecting your future installs so that you don't end up owning problems that somebody else started. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the TrueFlow Grid for creating this kind of technology to make our jobs a lot easier. And as always, work safe.